fiscal challenges, etc., that are there. So um, uh, very focused on being cost effective. We actually fund ourselves and then work out what dividend is needed to pay. So um, we kind of work, it's a great business to be in central banking. Um, mm. you print money and people believe it. Um, mm. you print money and people believe it. Um, mm. you print money and people believe it. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and uh, touch wood. Touch wood. Um, and so, um, so it's, um, it's a slightly different beast. To, Nick Coyle, we did an interview a month ago about your experience of what we called banking abuse in New Zealand. Did we ever blow the lid off banking abuse in New Zealand? Since then, I've had many messages and emails. You've had many messages and emails. The threads of those online posts with that interview are full of stories of banking abuse. Mm -hmm. And I, we at NZ Loyal have had our bank account shut down by Westpac, another of the bullying banks. That's a future story which I will tell. It's definitely linked in with our doing work to help the whistleblower, Barry Young. So who's implicated in that? Is it Ministry of Health? Is it government? What is Westpac doing to bully the people of New Zealand? This one though, Nick, is on ANZ, Correct. ANZ's head. So tell me please, that after all of these comments from so many New Zealanders saying what ANZ did to you is wrong, that ANZ backed down and showed some humility? Is that what happened? Well, Liz, no, that is not what happened. So basically the complaint was resubmitted, obviously, after the accounts were closed and uh, for reinvestigation, right? So they went through their process Potentially, we don't really know what happened internally inside the bank, but basically the outcome was the same uh, as it was initially. So they've said the banking ombudsman had already made their decision in the previous case, so we do not find that ANZ has done anything wrong. But wait a minute, the previous case, let's bring people Correct. up to speed here. The ANZ came after you for some pathetic amount and it was to do with cryptocurrency and it was around $9,000 was involved mm. when you've had $5 million worth of work flowing through the ANZ. You're a successful, self-made New Zealand businessman. You do everything by the book. You understand money well. Am I, am I right so yeah, far in the correct. summary? Yeah, that's Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you questioned them, just very briefly, take the facts from there to bring people in. You questioned them and they went, it went to the banking ombudsman because you had somebody, our friend in the bank, what was his yeah. name? Mr. James Willis was the uh, instigator of this yeah, James situation, Willis. let's call it. Yeah. You had a man who simply would not listen to you in the bank, who would not show any humanity. I've had the same experience. Mm. So what you did was you took it to the banking ombudsman, but subsequently the bank did what? Uh, basically, once the ombudsman had uh, investigated the first time round, it there wasn't you know the actions hadn't been complete. So we'd provided the extra information that they required. After that, then the accounts were shut down. Obviously, that's on our last interview. So yeah, we had to go back to the banking ombudsman to clear that up and but just get a resolve. Like we had moved banks, it's fine, but we want to resolve because this can't happen. It just can't. Uh, it was very disruptive to the business. There's ongoing uh, events that are actually happening in the background now where Mr. James Willis made a mistake. So we've got to clean all this up as well. It's, it's very time uh, and money heavy with, you know, it's requiring a lot more investment of time and money, basically. A lot of the emails I had said, I'm so thankful to Nick for standing up because I didn't have the time or the money to push back on the bank. And it felt yep. like a big bureaucracy coming at me. There are a lot of Kiwis feeling that. These banks are bullying individuals who don't have the extra time to take them on mm. when they're doing it. So yep. to many, you're a hero for standing <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, well, it's intimidating, right? So mm. going up against a bank, it's intimidating. And they do, they have deep pockets. They can fund whatever they like, right? So you, you generally, there's nothing you're going to be able to do. You can't afford a lawyer to fight all of this kind of thing. So you kind of just have to take the medicine and lie down and, and it is what it is. But you're not doing that on behalf of no, so no, many Kiwis. No, we're not, Kiwis. no. Were you surprised? 
that they came back, the ANZ, with absolutely not one skerrick of shame about their employee, James Willis, who yeah, had not, been so rude to you? Not really, because obviously between those two parts we had a lot of emails and uh, yeah, obviously we're not the only ones that James Willis has uh, been harassing. I did try and go back to the bank and get a record of how many complaints had been submitted against James Willis, but of course they were, uh, they were not willing to share that information. Meantime, the people of New Zealand are sharing the information. That's right. Read out some of the emails that you've had. What are some of the examples? <laughs> yeah. uh, so basically, we've got emails. I'm a, like these are only a couple. Like there is a lot of emails, uh, and whether it's dealing with the ANZ in general, or there are a few here that specifically name James Willis as well. Uh, so basically, everybody. I have had no negative uh, emails uh, at all. Uh, they've all been positive. What are they generally saying, Nick? What, what, what for yeah. you are the tone? For me, it was, this guy's heroic. He's doing it on behalf of all of us. Yeah. I'm sick of the banks bullying. The banks have made it really hard for me in my business and my home life. Those sorts of emails I had. That's exactly what we're getting. Is so, that what you had as well? Yeah, this, yep. I mean, I've got one here where, you know, uh, clients had been sold into debt. Uh, originally when you know they were younger and can afford it <clears throat> and not given decent financial advice on the way through so basically uh, reached their retirement age at 65 and uh, still having to work because of the amount of debt they've accrued and uh, they don't have enough assets or cash flow to you know support their retirement and what uh, does that mean sold into debt because others will will relate to that what was that man meaning well by that, that brings me to my other email that I uh, chose to pull out of uh, of the masses and it basically comes down to uh, an ex-employee of ANZ and they have given a very detailed description of what they were told to do by their managers and it was basically sell debt. Can, so, you, can you read that out? We'll, we'll bring this up on screen and we'll just have a little look. Go through yeah, it. so the person uh, didn't uh, wish, wish, to be, wish to be named. Uh, yeah, we can, make thing, it, so we we'll can anonymise to, it for yeah, sure. So it, uh, the, yeah, basically, I'll just read a snippet from it. I guess yeah. it's probably the best. Uh, Ex-ANZ employee, uh, this, the job was soul-destroying. The bullying of staff to, in capital letters, sell debt. And we can go into that in a minute. Uh, and, of course, to the clients to buy the debt. So debt is how they make their money, right? So uh, if they don't sell, that's their product. Their product is debt. So if people aren't buying it, they're not making any money. Uh, so These are the bank employees. They're incentivized to get New Zealanders into debt, in correct, effect. Correct. So uh, to go on, I'll carry on, uh, the regional manager did nothing uh, but drive around the branches in his region, uh, cracking the whip to make sales. Sales of debt, because debt is their product. Uh, so every debt that was sold would bring him very, uh, sorry, further would further him towards his large bonus again in capital letters. So this is a, an obviously an employee that knows what you know was going on, but not only that knows you know the bonus structures. So potentially maybe a you know a, a pay person or something like that. So yeah, it uh, and the and the email just goes on in in the uh, regarding the environment. Can uh, you read the, that out, Nick? This, yeah. I think this is important that people understand if they remain with ANZ. They are supporting quite a bullying culture, it sounds like. Yeah, so I mean, it's the people that are earning the bonuses, obviously, that are cracking the whip on the people that are in the coal fa at the coalface selling the, selling the product. Uh, so yeah, uh, in, what an environment for bullying, competition, fear, whip cracking, managers who uh, swore and stomped at us. So I'm assuming it was, you know, very, almost like a militant type uh, establishment. That's the, where this person obviously worked. Uh, so. <clears throat> During the training, they were told to lend at all costs. Uh, when somebody complained about it and said that it was unethical, uh, blah, 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 uh, to lend, yeah, say 30K to an 18 year old for a fast car, their reply was, it doesn't matter, sell the debt. <laughs> yeah, so that's horrendous. Yeah, I guess, yeah, so I'm not ex bank. So that's my point of difference when it comes to finance and mortgages. I'm not ex bank. I've never been institutionalized, I've never been subject to this. So that's. Yeah, something that I was never really aware of uh, until all of these people started emailing us. Yeah. There is so much to be unpacked in this country, mm. but our banking system is looking more and more dodgy. Mm. 
What about James Willis himself? What emails did you get on James? <laughs> yeah, because so you had more than one I saying did, I, I did. too had a very traumatizing experience with James Willis. Yes, so James Willis, there's another person that has basically come out and said that they've uh, their their story is exactly the same as mine. Uh, a discrepancy on purchases, ironically again, cryptocurrency accounts in front of James Willis cancelled. Done. So that person had their accounts shut down as well. Yeah, they were closed as well. So <clears throat> it's an ongoing process. That's his job to close accounts down. Clearly, he's probably got KPIs behind it. Perhaps we don't really know. I did reach out to ANZ and uh, request information around how many complaints, complaints had been submitted against James Willis, but they obviously refused to uh, to comply with that request. KPIs behind it, key performance indicators. So Correct. you you mean that he, on his part, in his part of the bank, might be being incentivized and paid the more people he bullies and shuts down well they're poten that, i mean potentially we don't potentially know we there. are uh, we are speculating obviously but uh, at the end of the day uh, well, we've got emails from ex-employees saying that they were incentivized by large bonuses to push debt so if james willis's job is not to sell debt is to potentially close down, close down accounts yeah i can't understand what's going on with banks many <laughs> kiwis can't they have totally lost it seems to me their customer focus if we're not the focus of a bank's business, who is? Ah, uh, I don't know. It, it comes down to profit. It's always follow the money, right? So at the end of the day, if they're making you know large profits, they are funneling back up the system, and you have to follow the money. Mm. We asked last time, please write into the ANZ and let them know you do not approve of of how they've treated Nick. I had other emails where people said I wrote in. Mm. And it's just been ignored. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people that actually copy me in to uh, emails to James Willis as well. I know that people did reach out to the CEO of ANZ Bank. Uh, however, you know, the only we, we don't have their direct contacts, so that, mm. that's a problem too. You should be able to talk to the CEO and you should be able to push a complaint up to the CEO. Absolutely. I understand they're busy, but they need to know what's going on down the bottom if they don't already know. I just want to say thank you to all of you who took that up as part of your contribution to this, this fight back against banking abuse, and wrote in or contacted the CEO or James Willis. But here's the frustration. Who's had a reply? No one that we know so far. No, nobody is. Not that, not that we're aware of. It's been ignored. Uh, so we are back at the Ombudsman again. Uh, so they're reinvesting the final com uh, reinvestigating the final complaint now. So we still don't have a final outcome. However, it is still being looked at. There's a good sign to that though, isn't there? Because last time they came back to you quite quickly. What's happened yep. this time? Uh, yeah. It has been taking a long time. So once the ANZ did come back with their final decision, which mm -hmm. was we have done nothing wrong because the Ombudsman said so last time, which technically doesn't make any sense, uh, then we've... Be because that, that was prior to them shutting down your account. That's correct. So that's not relevant anymore. Yeah, no, okay. that's not relevant. Yeah. So that's gone back to the Ombudsman. However, <laughs> uh, side note, uh, once all the accounts were closed down, there's something that's gone wrong in the background and there are accounts that are still open and apparently still accumulating debt somehow. So now we've been sent to uh, credit collections to pay to repay a debt that's already been repaid. That's James Willis's fault. So he's taken all our money, settled all the debt, paid out what was remaining, but now there's a debt still open and no one can find it. It's insanity. That is utterly incompetent. Yeah. So yeah, it's incompetence. Yeah, absolutely, it's highest level. Could it be intentional bullying? Potentially, it could be intentional. But it's, if, if it's not intentional, it's incompetence. It's one or the other. So What yeah. can you do with that, Nick? Nothing. We can do absolutely nothing. So I've already engaged with the credit controller and uh, sent them all the information. I've shown them that everything's been paid uh, and funds were distributed back to us. Uh, so now they're working with ANZ to figure out how this has happened. So, the time this is taking yeah, of your yeah, time. Yeah, more time. You need damages. You need compensation for all this time. Yeah, well, for like... Their Competence. Yeah, that's the thing now is like, okay, cool, we have to wait till the ombudsman comes back and then we would have to go and seek damages potentially, yeah. Have you sent this latest defalcation by the bank to the ombuds Not ombudsman? yet, but it's about to go. This is very, very recent. This is only yeah. two days old. This week. Wow. Yeah, this week, post-Easter. Mm. Nick, you're willing to go all the way if the ombudsman fudges things and doesn't doesn't do the right thing because the Correct. right thing is to call the bank out and stick up for the Kiwi yep. who is... You've done nothing wrong, you run your accounts well, you've been bullied by a bank, and somewhere that must be the ombudsman's job to stick up for you. 
But if that goes the wrong way, you're, you're willing to take this further. Where are you willing to take it? Yes, so the next step is the FMA, uh, and I do believe that it has to go there. So we've already packaged everything up. We've got all the correspondence just ready to go. Uh, we're the not... Financial Markets Authority. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much the final stage uh, where we have to go. But then, you know, it's... Uh, it's, a, it's really in their hands to see what happens from there. Who do they answer to? Is it somebody that's in the, the government? No, that's the government's uh, yeah, yeah. arm of the financial market, basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do we have a good government that's going to really stick up for New Zealanders? That's the question so many New Zealanders are asking. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is I understand that the bank is a business. However, you know, the bank is, is, provides a service. It does provide a service to, for us to, or to allow us to transact. Uh, it needs to provide the service and not be tied up in all this, you know, well, we already know how I feel about the email scenario. So it, it's, it's too much. It is too much. What would you like in terms of public support and help? Do you want people to keep do you want people to write to the banking ombudsman on your behalf? Yeah, that could potentially help as well. I mean, any any sort of support is is definitely you know a, a, a step in the right direction. I feel you're doing it on behalf of all Kiwis. Do you, Nick? Yeah. Well, again, like ANZ is done for us now. Like we're not there anymore. We're banking somewhere else, so that's fine. Uh, I would never go back there, uh, even if they did offer to open our accounts. I mean, why would you? Uh, but at the same time, this this just can't happen because if it happens to too many times, too many people, it's you. Know, you know, it's what where are we at? Like what's gonna happen, you know? On the flip side, we had some really positive messages that came through, really good ones. There was one fellow that you told me about who said he took our interview to his bank, and I don't know which bank that was. He was having difficulty and the next day the bank became cooperative. Oh, is that right? I didn't became see that. Became very good. helpful and yep. said, Yep, we'll work with you. Okay. So actually using that interview can help persuade other banks mm. to be more reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't really know what's going on inside the banks. Like I mentioned in our last interview, you know, there's so many segmented, uh, segmented parts of the bank where people don't even they're probably not even aware of mm. what a, a different unit is, is in charge of. So uh, yeah, you just don't really know what's going on. We will keep following this through, so an update in another few weeks, especially once you hear from the Ombudsman. Mm. But in the meantime, we're going to start our money series. Yes, the money series. And that, I think that is where we want more public input as well. What would you like from the public for that, Nick? Uh, for the money series? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to go in and make it very, very basic, for mm. easy for easy for anyone to understand. Uh, it might be below a lot of people, we understand that, but uh, the people that need the most help are you know, the ones that have not subjected to any kind of financial education in the past. Yes. Yeah. And so what we want from you are your questions. You can send them in to you, Nick. Yes, yep. yeah, absolutely. If you can give your address, we'll put it yep. up on screen uh, again. Just nick at freedomfinancial.co.nz. That's great. Mm. Send your questions in and they can be incorporated into the series. We're going to uh, call it Mastering Your Money with Nick Coyle. Yes. Are you happy with that title? Yeah, no, I like it. That's, That's good. very good. And that will be coming up soon. Please do send your questions in. Please write to the Ombudsman. And keep supporting Nick. The original interview is below this short update. Thank you, Nick. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you too.